It's summertime. Summertime is relaxed time. We just came to check on the farm. We're not here as much as spring or fall. Finally, we're getting some rain. Not much in the gauge, but it's cloudy. And this is tropical storm Faye is coming through. It made a lot of damage further south, but we'll see what it drops. We really need the rain. You see the trees are green. The grass, well, the grass, we haven't mowed the grass. I did it on purpose. No, no mowing, no roller crimping even. I'm just letting the grass shade the ground and it's made a difference. There's actually green grass, which if I had mowed, everything would be yellowed, browned right out. So leaving the grass tall at this time of year and this certainly in this year, we're way below average rainfall. And so it's made a big difference. Chickens are happy to see us. They, they've been doing their thing put them in this piece which is one of the weakest areas in the orchard it's the soil here is extremely sandy let me show you this here it's just this is bare sand almost so this isn't because the chickens are scratched this is the soil here you see how it's just there's hardly anything it's just big patches of bare sand. And you're all happy to see me. Us. So we'll see what the egg, egg situation is. Cherries like it. Cherries like the dry times. If you have dry sight, dry times, cherries are going to always be happy. Just to give you a little bit of a, an idea of what this is definitely, I call this the jungle period. This is the time of year where it kind of looks like, eh, it kind of can give you the impression that we're in the jungle, especially when here's the difference between the, the rows here that all have plastic mulch. So the trees got a lot better start than on this side, which there is no plastic. And so this is much more sparse and open. And the trees never got going very well here. And so I mean, these trees are just two meters high. Just never got going as well. And this area here, this did get plastic. And yeah, it's definitely much, much thicker. So this is why I say it kind of looks like the jungle. Well, some trees had something going on. If you saw the nitrogen fixing shrubs, here is the lead plant flower. Very nice flower. Jungle time! Jungle season, especially when I don't mow anything. And so it's, it's, it's thick, it's lush. And even though it's been dry, it's green, which is really the goal. Oh, caterpillars. Look at that. Ha ha. But where are they? Oh, there they are. They're up here. See that? So if you saw that caterpillar video, this is, I get excited to see caterpillars. Can you imagine? This used to be total infestation. It used to be disaster. It used to be horrible. And now, yes, I got caterpillars. That's fantastic. Can you imagine being excited about seeing a pest? Well, this is one that I actually am excited about seeing. Lots of birds around too right now. This is the end of the end. Some of them are still nesting. A lot of fledglings. Oh, this one's doing much better. Lead plant. Nice flowers. Could, too bad you can't smell on video, but that smell of rain after a dry period, it's, it smells really nice. 
really nice. It's been, it's been much needed to have a little bit of rain. There's a house wren, probably has its young out here somewhere. irrigation leak. Hey, sea berries! There's the sea berry fruit. If you go see that nitrogen fixing shrubs. I meant to do a video on irrigation. Oh, this is just one that opened up. Irrigation's running in this zone right now. Good to know that irrigation gets to the end of the rows. So here's the end of a row. They're almost, uh, they're 480 feet rows. And so the water goes through the whole length. There's three lines of irrigation in every, uh, in every row. Three lines of drip tape. 15 mil drip tape for those who want to know the technicalities. Oh, look at this. Some some of you know what that is. There's, a, there's your clue. Prickly ash. We never had that actually. I'm leaving it because I'm curious. I had the idea that maybe I can graft onto it a citrus. <laughs> Crazy idea, but you never know. Because they're in the same family. Citrus, uh, lemons, and and prickly ash. I didn't know that and I found that out. Oh, look at these. If you go see that video on how to prune black raspberry. I mean, this is this is black raspberry coming along here. So there's the new canes. See, two, there's more than two, but the two best ones. That's what I want to keep. And this is last year's good cane that when it gets so loaded with fruit, it actually it actually comes down. I'll have one for you. How's that? That one's not totally ripe yet. It's still a little bit of a purple sheen, but here goes. Mm. Yeah, it's starting to get there. Oh, here's another one. They're too, too heavy loaded and I didn't tie them up this year. Do what I say, don't do as I do. Is that the saying? So I never did tie them this year. I pruned them, but I didn't tie them. And so you can see they're getting now with a bit of, well, the rain helps, but these are under irrigation. And so they're, they're gonna be coming along probably by the time this video is done, they'll also be done and in our bellies. Ooh. This grass in some places is, about four feet high which isn't much but considering how dry it's been it's still it's still amazing I hear an irrigation leak in here oh, it's just a puncture one of the autumn olives they're doing really nicely Ooh, I really hear a few more irrigation leaks. I guess I'll have to come by and do a check on the irrigation. Where is that? It's right here. So I could just check it out. Eh, that's Cats actually cause leaks, funny enough. Cats are the ones that cause the most leaks in the irrigation. Can you imagine that? I'll have 
have another one. They are good. They're not totally ripe, but they're good already. Yeesh. There's a Sebastian, oh yeah, Sebastian Philip. Sebastian Philip and Juliet did some grafts this spring. So see that that result is that's working. There's a graft. So I stripped a few of these. Here's one that didn't take. And so that one didn't take, so the branch grows below it. Here's another one that took. So I asked them to do two or three on each tree and there we go so that one's been stripped because that's the one in line that'll be the nicest so I'll come back in the spring cut that cut here cut this off and we'll have just this one that will become the new the new top oh wow cup plants are starting to be impressive impressive and with this bit of rain they get their namesake so cup plant, you see that? There's a cup, it's a little cup of water. You see that water in there? Oops. And if you tip it, it actually pours the water out. You see that? Water comes pouring off the leaf. So the nice thing about cup plant is it's actually a useful, a useful plant for beneficial insects because in a day or two, there'll still be water in some of these cups and so this is a really prairie plant a really good prairie plant and along with batesia and the other prairie plants i originally thought that looks like this would grow and my hunch was right prairie plants look at these these are almost like a shrub this is four and a half feet high meter 30 Just a quick little walk about them today about the getting some rain. I'm excited about rain. It's nice to see rain again. Wow. Here's a branch that normally I would not leave. You see there's two branches, both competing as trunks. And if you go see the pruning course, that's that's one of the things normally I would look at taking out but this block is a non prune block so uh, I prune minimally here just to keep the aisles free but I don't touch if they have two trunks three trunks I just leave them here and it's actually turning out to be surprisingly good surprisingly good because I realized wow oh I realize I don't need to prune the trees as much as I have. Here's one of my, this is the oldest one, Korean pine, Pinus coriensis. And this one, just in the lee, it was supposed to have some shade when it's younger. So I put it in the lee of this honey locust. And that's going to be something in the future. It's a slower growing. We put in a few more since. Slower growing, they're really slow to get started. But once they get started, it's really nice to know and see them. I didn't do a thing on June drop, but I say a few words on it. This is the time of year. We're, we're in July already, almost mid-July now. But this is the time of year where the fruit that either have been hit by insects, a lot of these are from plum curculio but any of the clusters that would be too numerous they'll abort some of the fruit or this year i think actually the clusters are really low there is not much there's one fruit here and there this year is is not at all a big year and the fruit that are there are actually really in bad shape so this is Part of why I am not coming as much to the farm right now is I don't really want to see this. <laughs> I don't need to be confirmed that, yeah, it's a terrible year. I know it's a terrible year, but it's normal if we had a record year last year, the trees produced so much 
It was just absolutely loads. We even left trees with fruit because we had no more room on the truck. And it was just such a big load of fruit. See, a tree like this has got almost nothing in it. And so the trees, when they produce so much one year, they produce less the other. And that's a byproduct of not fertilizing. Because we don't fertilize the orchard, we get trees producing really well one year and not producing well the other. And that's a setup from, actually goes back to 2012. You see something like this, the same. Almost nothing, and here's a branch with a few fruit. And they're not doing too well either. So it's a setup from 2012 when we had a complete frost. It was minus 8 on May 6th. I remember that cold, cold night and it froze everything. All the flowers, everything got frosted right out. Some more caterpillars. Actually, that's a three. Looks like a three nest. See them in there? So in the past, I used to remove these branches diligently and take them off and burn them. And now I just leave them because I've seen from years of having this that, oh my gosh, there's caterpillars. Oh, they're going to eat the tree. No, they start and they will eat because there's three started on there. They may eat a half, three quarters of that one branch. And then you have the whole tree. And that's it. They'll eat that piece. Because we're going into summer. So now there's a lot of birds around because of all the fledglings. And the wasps are really starting to ramp up. So the wasps will do a real number on them. This one has a bit of fruit. Not much. Not much. Even for members this year I've decided I'm not taking on new members and we'll only be open a limited amount much less than we've normally been simply because it, there just isn't the production to for people to pick so there's up years and there's down years and this is definitely more of a down year another graft there's one graft took that one didn't take and the third one did take so two out of three, they did well, they did well. Interns, first time they're grafting and they got good results. Here's a seedling senna, I think it's senna. It's one of the prairie nitrogen fixers. And look at this, this grass hasn't been mowed. And it's, this is not much. It's green, which is great. And if you look down inside, you actually see, I like the expression called soil armor. It means the ground is not bare. If I had mowed this, I would have taken this, this material here, that's down in there, I would have taken it and mowed it onto the aisle, uh, onto the rows, sorry, the plastic covered rows. But because I roller crimped this last year and the last two, three years maybe in this one, it, uh, it's down on the ground and it's covering the soil. And even through this dry period, the grass has stayed green, which is, it's an amazing feat. Because years ago when I used to mow it, and even when I, in the film, the permaculture orchard, if you go see that, I, I uh, explain how we did a six week rotation. And that was better than mowing the whole thing. That's definitely much better. But roller crimping, go see that mow and blow, roller crimp, chop and drop video. Roller crimping has done an amazing job on keeping grass green even through the droughts, which is, this is a feat because, well, you think, well, yeah, but doesn't it normally? No, this is our soil. Here, look at this. The dog dug this up and now it's, but this is just, this is beach sand here. That's our soil. Beach sand. And to have beach sand keep green grass, you should see all the neighbors around. Everything is completely yellowed out right now. And we've got green. And that's really just because of 
not mowing, which helped a lot. See, there's some dry beach sand in there. You see, that's not that dry, oh yeah. Take a look at this. Is that your soil? I mean, that's like, you could put that in an hourglass. And so that's our soil here. And if we mow grass low through this, if you have sandy, this is very sandy soil. If you have sandy soil, you know that if you mow this in the summer, not much is gonna happen, not much is gonna grow. And so having this grass unmowed, which see the long, see the long stems, what do they do? They actually shade the grass. So the ground, or they shade the soil. The soil stays cooler which reduces evaporation. And because of the last year's roller crimping, there's a, see there's a layer of duff. And that's super important to keep the soil from one, it's a little insulated blanket, keeps the soil cooler and it holds the moisture. It's a layer of mulch. And that's incredibly important in this kind of year. This is a great year to show what the practices have done. Here's an example. So this is just a, this is our access walkway. And so I did mow this and look at what happens when it's mowed. I mean, mowing it, yeah, there's still a bit of green because we had one rain, we had a centimeter almost of rain in the last two, two weeks. So it just kept it barely green, but it's not a, this is where it's, it looks, shows the driest. There's a good example. You see that? So there's a leak in an irrigation line. And that leak comes and sprays here. So if there's a bit of wind, it sprays an area. So look at this grass here. See how much greener, thicker, really thicker taller and just out of the range of the drip that's what it is see no water or just rain and extra water no water <laughs> extra water so for those of you who think i don't know if watering is important listen if you're going to fertilize or put fertilizer and you're not watering, you're kind of wasting a lot of effort. I still say water is the, is the cheapest fertilizer you could put. Certainly there's a cost to getting it set up, which can be significant, but once it's set up, this irrigation system, the, at least the main of the irrigation system has been in place for 40 years now. Yes, there's some maintenance to it, but the, once it's up, it's providing water to the whole, the whole farm. Actually, all 12 acres get watered or can get watered. We're not watering, <clears throat> excuse me, we're not watering all of it right now, but we can. So yeah, it makes a difference getting some water on there. Wow, is it ever warm. For those of you who saw the easy vegetable bed, I want to show you the vegetables are doing pretty well in this bed. We put all of, I think, Juliet and uh, Philip spent a half a day about uh, seeding this down in the spring. And certainly now it's growing. There's still holes in it. There's still holes. There's still bare plastic. And they're easy, even a few weeds. But you know what? It's, it's growing. Here's our peas and rutabaga mostly just peas and rutabaga here and yeah there's areas we thought that the last year's rutabaga would uh, last year we put in kale we thought they were going to come up uh, but it's it's growing and this is this is absolutely zero work we seeded this down and that was it like we haven't done anything we've harvested we've been harvesting lettuce out of here and peas and uh, the melons, zucchini. So we put things that are going to be 
Yeah, I've been harvesting some of the zucchini. Zucchini, zucchini. Here is the zucchini. We'll harvest those. And we put, yeah, the melons, uh, cucumbers. So they're doing okay. A little bit of cucumber beetle maybe. But they're, uh, now you can see by the size of the leaves, they're really cranking. They like the melons, especially like the warmth of the plastic. And all I've done is I've been mowing the grass. So you see, I mow, it's a mow and blow. So I mow it here and I blow it. It's like chop and drop, but mechanized version. So chop, drop, mow, blow. That's what I do. I go around the edge of the plastic and I edge it. And this, because all this gets watered here from these sprinkler irrigators, and there's the soaker hose. So go see that on easy vegetable uh, growing. And that's it. And you put some easy plants like this, melons, cucumbers, squash, beans, peas. These are really easy. The root ones we put in, the rutabaga are root. So all your root vegetables don't do as well in here because basically you need to open a bigger hole in the plastic. And if I had been, I really don't, do much about vegetables so I didn't do anything I guess I should have come back and reseeded and there's still time to reseed things in here certainly can grow a couple of more crops of lettuce in here it's still early enough in the season shorter season crops will work the early radish we put in have now been have flowered so they're I'm letting them flower and those pods will be the the radish seed for the next while that we'll use. Beans, well, the beans are starting. Won't be long, there'll be beans aplenty. Oh, in fact, some of them are. And one of the things about this, it's the, the system, Elliot Coleman's and Jean Martin Fortier's, it's the same system. So it's a 30 inch wide bed, and we put these panels, boards in the middle. So that's where we walk. You don't step on the bed. There's that bean. Oh, yeah. They've been nice. They've been good. So, that's a good little snack. So, an easy, easy vegetable bed. Some of you think, I don't know. Well, vegetables, yeah, for me, vegetables are way too much work. So, unless it's something like this. Oh, there's a weed. Look at that. Smart weed. Smart weed? We don't get that here unless we have an excess of water. And here we got a lot of water because they get the soaker hose under the plastic and the sprinkler irrigation. So then it gets enough water to actually trigger the sprouting of things like smart weed. And so you see weeds are an indicator. Go see that whole series on indicator plants. And uh, it, once you start to learn to read the plants and read why they're doing what they're doing. So here you get a bit of that look. You see the grass? Up to about there, it gets the effect from the sprinklers. The sprinklers reach to about there. And then this part, there's no water hits or very doesn't hit very often on this far. And so that stays a lot drier. Gonna do some harvesting, harvest some of these vegetables, take home. We got a bunch of eggs, had a nice little walk around, did some weeding through these squash. Yeah, no plastic on these because squash can grow big enough. Did a bit of weeding in the nursery and all of a sudden, look at that, weeded and it's like they've all of a sudden started to grow again because they were so weeded in. Somebody sees that, they said, it's a shame that, yeah, well, I'm not big on weeding. And so I didn't weed. But a few apple trees here, maybe 20, 30 trees will be ready for the fall. A little bit of garlic, which is almost ready to harvest. And then it will be garlic time. On a compost pile. <laughs> if ever you're wondering where to put uh, squash or pumpkin, put them where you have the most fertility. An old manure pile, a compost pile, Get it started on there and your squash will go crazy. 
So that's what we did here. Just put it on a pile that we piled up old compost, put some rock dust on it. And these squash without almost any water have been going crazy. As well, we opened up a, a new potato patch here. We've had potatoes for a while and we did them in a few ways. We had that the, the mulch, the deep mulch way last year. But we were growing the potatoes in a soil that's too close to neutral. And we had a lot of potato scab and we're looking up potato scab. The most critical thing is the acidity of the soil. So here next to the pine trees, we know this soil is more acid. I've tested the pH and, and so the potatoes here are doing much better. And we did them in our old traditional way of just opening a piece of ground, planting them and, and hilling them up. We did two hillings and that's it. Potatoes are well on their way flowering. We could probably get a few potatoes out of them already. Want to dig one up? We could dig one up. Have some little grabblers for lunch. Just had our anniversary. 38 years married, happily married. And so, hmm. And we thought, yep, this is what it was like 38 years ago. Stinker and hot, not today, but the other day when it was our anniversary, super hot and humid. That's what I remember, wedding day. Memories. Advice for how to stay married for 38 years. <laughs> no. Have a farm. <laughs> Have a farm where you can send your husband. <laughs> so that you have time away from each other. That's a good recipe for a long, happy marriage. Yeah. So you have to have a long time and together time. Oh, bow's onto something. Probably a vole. She caught a muskrat the other day. Enjoy the summer. It's a great time of year. Some of you say, well, this is our busiest time. Whatever is your season, for us, this is more of the relaxed time and we definitely try to get more relaxed time in. Thanks for watching. Intrigued? Check out the virtual tour of the permaculture orchard. Half trees already? Pruningcourse.com. Subscribe, please. Check out some of the other videos or playlists. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Bye. Hope you enjoyed this little mini <laughs> jungle season walkabout. Enjoy the summer. Thanks for watching. Bye.